Today we celebrate the Sunday, or the weekend, of the Word of God, which is the third uh, Sunday of ordinary time each year. And it's a reminder to go back to the Scriptures that this Word of God, that God speaks to us through the sacred Scripture, the Bible, is not just another book. It's not just even a, another set of books as it is, but it is God's Word, living and active in our lives. Here and now today, he has words, of course, from history, but he also speaks to us of what, how we are to live here, now, today. In the first reading today, we hear from the book of the prophet Nehemiah, um, and we hear all about uh, how Ezra had gotten up onto this platform in order to proclaim the word of God to the people as he held out the scroll, something that they hadn't heard necessarily in a long, long time. Some of them maybe not even in their lives because they had been in Babylon in exile. Now they're back in Jerusalem. They've been rebuilding the temple. And here he's proclaiming the word of God. And the people rise and, you know, they, they, they hear this and, and they're so overwhelmed. It's even bringing tears to their eyes. And then Nehemiah, His Excellency, and the prescribed Ezra and the Levites were there instructing the people and said, Today is holy to the Lord our God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For the people were weeping and they heard the words of the law. He said, Go, eat rich food and drink wine. And allotted the portions to those who have nothing. For today is holy to the Lord our God. Do not be sad in this day. For rejoicing in the Lord will be your strength. He says, listen to the word of God. And even though it might be bringing you that compunction to the heart. Piercing you deep within. Trust that this is good news. And rejoice in hearing God's love poured out for you today. Do we have that reaction when we listen to God's word in the sacred scriptures? Do we allow him to speak and to pierce our hearts? Sometimes, maybe the only time we listen to scripture is at mass when we come on the weekend. And that's pretty good. We go through the three-year cycle and we hear a lot of the scripture. But do we spend that time allowing God's word to seep into us, to speak to our hearts. Were you completely shocked and surprised when I started out the gospel today, reading as if I was uh, some editor saying, well, you know, I've, uh, I know that I've, many have undertaken to compile this narrative, and, you know, well, I've done my best to do the same thing, going back to the original sources and to make it right. You ever heard that before? That's at the very beginning of the gospel of Luke. And then there's a similar passage at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, written by the same person, Luke to the same person, Theophilus. And he's saying, I am, I've done my best to get the truth so that you can hear what really happened. That this isn't just a bunch of people writing so that we can hear what their thoughts are but so that we can hear the very word of God. Now, how do we read sacred scripture? First of all, a lot of times we get confused because once we take a Bible in hand and we start trying to read, yeah, it's confusing. Well, it's written for a different culture in a different time, uh, and it's so many different styles of writing as we go through it. Some of it's history, some of it's poetry, some of it's songs, some of, all these other things, and, and it can be too much for us. How do we read scripture? This is so important that we allow God to speak those words to our life. We need to know how to read what's written for us. Well, first of all, I would suggest that we don't just read from the beginning and try to go straight through when you're reading Scripture, because it can be a little difficult, especially when you get to Leviticus. It's kind of confusing as they're talking about all the different Levitical laws. It's the Word of God. It's beautiful. There's, but it can be difficult. Well, we have to take a look and say, okay, what is this particular book that I'm reading, meaning the book in the Bible, Genesis or Exodus or Luke or, or Numbers or whatever it may be, what is this being written for? Who is the intended audience? What are they trying to get across? 
And this is all important because when we read Scripture, there are really four different ways of reading Scripture that the church says are the right ways of reading Scripture. The first is the literal sense. And that's where we look and we say, this is what's really being said. So, for instance, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, when in chapter 61, we hear... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Who is saying this? This is Isaiah. Almighty God is speaking through Isaiah saying, the Lord has sent me to do something. And that's the literal meaning of the scripture passage. But wait, there's more, right? Because Jesus takes this scripture passage and he says, this isn't just about the literal meaning about what Isaiah was saying for that time and that place. It's also about me. Isaiah say, or Jesus is saying, it's also about me. He rolls up the scroll and everyone's looking at him and says, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. What? Whoa! Something's happening right here, right now. Jesus says, this scripture passage is about me. And that's where we get into the spiritual understandings and readings of the scripture. You have the literal sense, which is, what is this plainly saying? Who is this speaking to? Are they talking in, in, uh, in simile or metaphor or analogy? Are they speaking literally? What's going on? What do they mean this to be? Is it poetry? What does this mean? But then we look at the spiritual readings of scripture. And there are three types of spiritual reading of scripture. The moral, the allegorical, and the anagogical. Isn't that all clear now? Right, Father, whatever you want to believe. So the moral is that we look and you say, how is this speaking about how I can live my life? And certainly, it can be pretty obvious like with the Ten Commandments. When the scripture says, thou shalt not kill, guess what? Thou shalt not kill pretty obvious about what that moral meaning is. And there's a lot of that throughout the scriptures, but there is also a deeper meaning, a spiritual meaning in very many of the things where, for instance, it might be saying, you know, these 12 things happen, but then this, those who are the fathers of the church have looked at this and prayed about this and saying, and so these 12 things are saying this is how we're supposed to live. Or, for instance, when David, you remember the story of David and Goliath, that's one of everyone's favorite stories, right? Where here the small guy, the underdog, he comes and beats, beats up the big guy. And he goes to the wadi, the, the stream bed, and he picks up five stones. Well, the fathers of the church have looked at those five stones and said, well, these, are, these each five stones mean different things about how we are to live in our spiritual life and fight the spiritual battles that this is... And I, I should have looked this up beforehand. I don't remember what they are. Um, but, you know, it's one of these things that you take them and this is how we, we kill the giants in our lives. Not physical giants, but the things that are coming against us. That's the moral way of reading the sacred scripture. Then there's the allegorical way. And this is where we see this is speaking about this and there is a literal meaning to it. But it's also speaking about something else. About Jesus. So, for instance, in that same story, David and Goliath, Jesus, David is Jesus. And how he has slain the giant of sin that has been keeping us bound so that we can be set free. It's an allegorical reading of the sacred scriptures. And then there's the anagogical reading. That's probably the, like the, what does that mean, Father? That's talking about that there's this mystical reading in reference to things eternal. And a lot of times when we read the sacred scriptures and we hear, for instance, in the Old Testament, some references, scripture scholars saying, well, this is in reference to Mary. That's the anagogical reading. That we're looking and we talk about how Mary is the ar Ark of the New Covenant. So every time we hear about how the Ark is brought about or it's, it's there with the presence of the Lord, it's speaking, and we say, well, that's Mary. That's the anagogical reading of it. Looking at things eternal and how God is moving here in that scripture passage there. 
So we've got these four different senses of Scripture. And I know you're all going to be able to recite them back to me. But for the two of you that may have forgotten, I'll go through this again. The literal meaning, what is it literally saying? But then the moral meaning, how does this speak to my life? The allegorical reading, how does this passage relate to Jesus? And the anagogical reading, how does this have this mystical reality of what are we talking about for heaven and eternity? Now, break this all down. That's a whole lot of stuff and you're saying, well, Father, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Well, first of all, we have to remember that because this is the Word of God, because this is sacred scripture and it's the Word of God, it first has to be read in the context of prayer. When I was in college at UNH, I took two scripture classes. Must have been really good, right? UNH theology. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, but they were part of the religious studies classes. I took them, I forget, under whatever guise. I just said, well, one of my friends had taken the classes, thought it was good, so I took them. And it certainly gave me a very good historical understanding of the scriptures. But what we did there was just dissection. Dissecting the scriptures. Devoid of the author who was writing the scriptures. And who is the author? Well, of course, we have many human authors, but ultimately, the author is Almighty God. We can't just dissect the scriptures. We need to pray with the scriptures, allowing God to speak his words of love to us. And when we allow him to speak those words of love to us, suddenly, It's not just something from 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, but now spiritually that is speaking to my life here and now today. I've used this example before, but it still is powerful in my mind, is when uh, I'd gone to confession and my my confessor said to me, uh, my penance was to read through and pray through Psalm 2. Now, I'd prayed Psalm 2 many a times over the course of my life as a priest at that point. I was probably three years ordained, and I'd been praying the breviary since I was a senior in college, so it'd been at least six or seven or eight years that I'd been praying Psalm 2 pretty regularly. And I'm saying, oh, okay, got to go and pray Psalm 2 again. I didn't really like the psalm very much either. Why do the nations rage in anger? Oh, all this stuff. Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's really good. Just what I need. But in that moment, what was going on in my life was I felt so overwhelmed. I felt like there was nothing I could do right. I felt like just so distant from God. And my pastor didn't, he was like, I don't even know why I'm giving this to you, but it popped into my mind. So here. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Real helpful. Um, but so I. I went and I prayed through this, and there is this line where it talks about how those those, um, nations are going against the person, but he says, the Lord in heaven is laughing them to scorn. And it struck me as like, I've read this line so many times, but I never heard this before. God is saying he's greater than all those that are coming against them. And then this line, the Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask, and I'll bequeath you the nations. And I heard the Lord speak to my heart, I am God's son. And even though the world seems to be against me, even though I don't seem to be able to do anything right, even though I feel like I'm falling apart and distant from God, God is saying, I'm greater than all that. I'm bigger than all that. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. The power of sacred scripture to break through our brokenness to speak his love to our hearts.
So you're saying, okay, Father, you've convinced me. I want to start spending more time with the scriptures. But how? How? Well, there are a lot of different ways we can do that. One, of course, as I mentioned last year, Father Michael Schmitz was doing the Bible in a Year podcast. It's still going on. You can always start up now. If you haven't done it before, he'll take you through the Bible. He'll give some commentary and get through in a year. And maybe, maybe for you, you did start it last January when I talked about it then. And you're still going through and you're saying, Father, it's going to be a Bible in two-year podcast. That's okay, too. That's okay, allowing the sacred scriptures to wash over our lives. But if you're saying, well, well, I'd rather, you know, have the physical book in front of me. How do I do this? Well, first of all, figure out where you're going to start. Maybe, maybe you'll start in the Gospels, allowing God to speak his words of love. I mean, we're going through the Gospel of Luke right now, so there's a good place to start. A lot of familiar things in the Gospel of Luke, after all. We have the story of uh, the... Um, the, the Annunciation to Mary and then Elizabeth and all that stuff. We have uh, the story of the prodigal son. Uh, we have all sorts of stories that you'd be familiar with in, in Luke. Maybe you'll start there. Or maybe you could just say, well, I just want to read the readings for the upcoming weekend and pray through them. Maybe do the first reading on Monday and the psalm on Tuesday and the second reading on Wednesday and the gospel on Thursday. And then uh, I don't have to listen to God for the rest of the week. No, no, that's not right. But, <laughs> but in any case, maybe just taking even just the gospel for this coming Sunday and saying, okay, God, what is this that you're saying? And start with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Speak your words of love to my heart. And then read through it slowly. Maybe imagining the context and putting yourself there. Maybe just allowing a word or a phrase to stick out to you and allowing God to speak. You see, the sacred scriptures are living and active. When you cut the, the pages of most textbooks, what, what do you have is ink runs out. But when you cut the pages of the Bible, blood runs out because it's alive you know I'm talking metaphorically here right please don't cut your Bible up but it's alive because the Holy Spirit is speaking through the sacred scriptures and God the Father wants to speak to we his children and so we need to allow God then to speak those words of love to our hearts as we pray through the sacred scriptures and say, God, here I am. Speak to me. Speak to me your word.